the college basketball experience. John Calipari to the Arkansas Razorbacks episode and a little bit of other coaching news. Um, on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 different states. Head to cut.com. That's K U T T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pickup for a chance to win 100 times the amount of money you could enter. And obviously, college basketball and college football, but also the UFL, MLB, NHL, NBA, golf, and much more. Sign up today using the promo code TCE. GPN uh, to get a hundred percent deposit match. We're also brought to you by a V O yes. Uh, the premier arbitrage sports betting tool, a V O uh, use their tool to bet both sides and lock in a profit access their platform for free at, or at arbs versus odds.com. Once again, that's a R B S versus odds.com. Plus, in honor of the Masters Week, the Golf Gambling Podca- Podcast guys are giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free. Enter at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. Hey, this is Pac Man Jones. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Uh, welcome to the college basketball experience. And if you thought we were just uh, done with the regular season and we're just, you're never going to hear from us again. <laughs> you don't fucking know us. We talk, uh, we talk really college sports and, 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 and most all sports on SGPN year round, year round. It's a year round thing here. So buckle up folks, hit that like, hit that subscribe, youtube.com slash the college experience. Get on over there. iTunes five star. You you've been rewarded with this whole season of fun. Get on over there. Give us a five star review. Don't be a fucking retard. All right, let's get on over there. All right, let's go. All right. Um. Uh. I mean, that's just regarding it. It's a callback to a uh, to a, a <laughs> I review. Knew you were I got. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> um. But uh, if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, well, my name is Colby Swing at Database Dad, aka Pick. Don D, that's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. And you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. <laughs> Look, I have a Louisville basketball jersey that a fan sent me. I couldn't find it. But I'm wearing my Kentucky blue college basketball experience. And, you know, the great state of Kentucky is going to have a lot of change this upcoming season. We'll talk about it. I'm joined by my co-host, the, well, Give it up for former, former video coordinator for Hall of Fame coach Bob Huggins and Frank Martin, host of the Big 12 College Experience. They're not done either. Keep subscribing. Host of the Ryan and Rush Show. Give it up for Ryan McIntyre, a.k.a. Mana Line Mac. How you doing, brother? As a former video coordinator for Bob Huggins, I hope this offseason is better than the last one. Last offseason. Come on, make it Mac tonight. And there's talk that he could be K- uh, Kentucky's next head coach. Yeah, um, there's a lot uh, of talk everywhere. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> yeah, man, it, I, it just reminds you of last year. I'm like, God, last year was a nightmare. This whole this whole last calendar year was a nightmare for us West Virginia hugs guys. And you know that. Let's talk about coaching for a second because I don't know that I've ever seen an off season like this. Ooh. And uh, and shout April out to 38. 9th, by the way. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's April 9th, but and shout out to 3802. Abilene, Abilene Christian football review is after this. Yes. Yeah. We will talk that on the FCS college football experience. Subscribe. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even talking portal. I don't know that I've ever seen one. I'm trying to think in my head. So we had Rob Lanier get fired at SMU, right? In a second, in a second year. I don't know what they were expecting. Like Memphis was the most talented team and FAU was second coming into the year, they kind of did what I thought they might've even been a little bit better than I thought they would be, but he gets fired at SMU. He's now at rice, by the way, shout out rice fans rejoice. Um, go owls. Um, you know, I'm all in already. They, they recruited me. I'm on, I'm all in. Let's go rice. <laughs> let's, rice go. let's get some tickets to Houston, uh, rice versus Houston national championship. All right, let's yeah. go. Um, but, uh, I did not think that SMU <laughs> would be able to steal the sitting head coach of USC and Andy Enfield. I, I, I was shocked by that. I was like, wait a second, USC. I know USC is a football school, but I was like, SMU is a football school too. And uh, I just didn't think that it would be able to happen. And especially USC has got the big 10 money coming in. I know they have a new athletic director. And I do think that matters, but then I didn't think that Arkansas's sitting head coach would leave for USC. Arkansas is a proud program. Uh, two elite eights. What recently? Uh, back-to-back national championship appearances in the '90s. I can remember those teams with Corey Beck and Scotty Thurman and uh, Roy Rogers and and just uh, Corliss Williams and just everybody, everybody. Um, what? Uh, and, and so I, I was. I was constantly dumbfounded in this, this off season. I know we were focusing on games, but I was like, wait, they got, they fired Lanier. Why? What? Wait, Andy Enfield left for SMU. Why? Wait, Musselman left for USC. Why? Right. And then the, the cherry on top is Calipari leaves for Arkansas and leaves 35 million on the table. What, what the fuck is happening in this sport? Um, <laughs> we got to break that all of it before I we know. get to Calipari because I mean, have you, I, I can't recall a time where that many p- schools left tradition, like the more powerful basketball program for the less powerful basketball program. It happened four fucking times in a way, three and a half, I guess you could say your thoughts. Well, I, I don't know if this is official, but like you talk about Cal party, the cherry on top and a little chocolate, chocolate syrup because Nate Oates apparently Rejecting Kentucky to stay in Alabama. I Hold mean, on. I got what something is going for that. on. Like everything that we thought from a tradition. Well, well yeah, I don't get. I got my head cold. But from one coach to another, Lou Holtz to uh, yeah. But I mean, guys, this is insane. So, and there's still pending dominoes here with who Kentucky ends wow. up landing. Uh I've never seen an off season like this. Uh, you know, I know Mike's talking about Gary Williams from Ohio state uh, to Maryland was surprising, but still you never saw three or four at the same fucking time. Not you know what I mean? Nobody leaves Kentucky unless you're fucking That's the winningest program in the history of college basketball. And you leave for Arkansas, but even crazier is Arkansas is like a proud program to me in basketball. You leave Arkansas for USC. No, I live in LA. No one fucking talks about USC. Not since fucking Harold Miner, and even then, I don't think they talked about USC. Um, and the uh, even more surprising thing about this is the first domino was SMU, which, and the which fourth one irrelevant. was irrelevant. Yes, he was the fourth domino in this thing that all that happened. And since you you walked through that path, you didn't mention this. It takes like two minutes to do a little bit of research on John Tyson, who's the current uh, CEO Tyson Chicken and Food Tyson Foods, I think is the. Uh, official name um so his this is gonna be crazy he attended the university of arkansas then he transferred to usc he finished his bachelor of business administration degree at smu <laughs> so he pulled he, all the strings he, he may have pulled all of these freaking strings to get his buddy john calipari to Arkansas. 
I I, I, mean, I, I want to go back to the first first domino. Rob Lanier at SMU went ten and twenty two year one, goes twenty and thirteen year number two. So he doubles his win in the AAC. They go from five wins to eleven wins, so more than doubles. It gets fired. He gets and fired. get this. And this is a program that's been to the NCAA tournament three times in thirty years. Yeah, Larry Brown was. Who the, the fuck do you think you are? What? What is going on here? Like, I, George Bush Andy. all of a sudden's making calls. SMU's in the ACC, and all of a sudden they're a basketball school. I'll tell you what, Kevin Keats would not have lasted at SMU. He would have not. <laughs> he certainly would have not. I know. And this is. I mean. What the fuck? What is this? I mean, this so Larry Brown only got them there once. Jankovic got them there once. Yeah. And they both lost in the first round. They went in 92 with John Shoemate lost in the first round. They went in the eighties with Dave bliss uh, class class act. Dave bliss. Uh, they made it to the second round. So they've made it to the second test. They haven't made it to the second round in the past 35 years, 36 years ago. They went to the second round 20 and there's years too. And th- th- how about this, dude? They have only had more than twenty win, like more than twenty wins. Uh, I'm seeing six times in thirty years, and this guy just gave him a twenty win season, and they fire him. Whoo! Crazy. I what he didn't? What he turned down Epstein Island? What happened? <laughs> I mean, that's it was insane. Like the Cl- it was almost like the Clintons were making. Pulling strings behind closed doors. No, the so Bushes. The Bushes. Party. SMU had George hey, W. call the ACC. It's all connected. Hey, they, it's like yeah, octopus they, murders. You seen that shit on Netflix? The octopus murders, man. Martinsburg, West Virginia. All right. The deep state. The 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 Bushes and the Clintons. And you know the Bushes are like, or the Clintons said, "Hey, we need Calipari in Arkansas." Well, here's how we're going to start it. Let's call George <laughs> Bush. Get it done at SMU. That gets get to them Arkansas into the ACC. The <laughs> I want to do one of those octopus <laughs> diagrams that's in that fucking documentary, right? Uh, this is so fucked up. I can't believe Lanier got fired, and I can't believe this triggered Enfield, Musselman to Calipari, and now who knows what the fuck it's going to the next time. Now. This is yeah. crazy, man. It's, uh, dude, I, I mean, I know we're going to get to that, but this isn't done yet. That's the best part. It's part no. of the conspiracy. Put your tin foil hat on. They might be calling up next, the next uh, presidents, you know, might have to make some phone calls. Condoleezza rice might be involved. Um, it is an election year. Everybody's involved. <laughs> oh God. I don't, don't get me to November. I just November 4th is basketball. Get me to November, but just don't November get me on the, the is politics. It's is yeah. election night. So it's like, God they go damn it. It's like, <laughs> boom. <laughs> We're going to have to handicap that on uh, opening night. Who's going to be into it? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Maybe they got some of that John Daly money. Arkansas, big Arkansas guy. I love John Daly, even though I had a run in and I thought uh, I enjoyed him, but he was definitely, definitely uh, hilarious at the Hooters in Daytona beach back in, I don't know, 2001, something like that. Um, so I think rice landed a great job, did a great job getting Rob Lanier. Great job. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I think SMU still, still did a good job by getting, I think Enfield's a great coach. I think they'll, they'll win there. Right. Can we talk about Enfield a little bit? I think quietly one of the better jobs in the last, I mean, he didn't do a great job, but he did a solid job. He went to the tournament five out of 10 years and a job that, really hasn't had much stability. And we talked about in the preseason, the worst thing he did was ever was recruit the TMZ guys. Cause then it drew attention to him. And yeah, that kind of, I mean, going into that, he had been to three straight NCAA tournaments, including an elite eight. And he was going to make, actually he, w- he was going to be four straight NCAA tournaments and kind of, he went the TMZ route. It was his first losing season in over six years. He's a good coach. He is a good coach. Like I I think SMU is still in good shape. Yeah, (laughs) they were in good shape. Now they're in good shape. Um, and and then let's we'll we'll break down the next part of this. But um, I want to tell you folks out there that the college basketball experience on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network uh, is honoring the Golf Gambling Podcast. Get on over there and subscribe, folks. It is Masters Week, 
And in honor of Masters Week, they're giving away a tailor made Spider X putter. Enter for free. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. And also attention, San Diego, California. Sean Stack on the Money Green and Ryan Real Money Kramer from the Sports Gala Podcast are gonna be going to a special circus sports watch party starting Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. at Social Swing. Free drinks for anyone wearing Cubs or Padres gear. So grab a cocktail and say what's up to the fellas. We're also brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's US based and available in Florida different states. P2P social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users of sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. Plus, they got a ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network, so to speak. Cut also offers lower VIG and uh, fully customizable odds. You can create your own bets and get this cut handles the payment side of things so you don't gotta put all that camo shit on your face and hang out in the fucking bushes of old Stevie's house. Waiting for him to come out the door so you give him a fucking shiner and take your money. No, you don't have to do that. Um, cut handles all that. All right. So uh, download the cut app today or head over to cut.com. That's K U T T. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports, it's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. We were all over it for the national championship in college basketball. And um, I'm playing the hell out of it with the uh, UFL. Uh, you know, I host the UFL gambling podcast, but it, 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 they're, they're giving you that they're giving you NHL, NBA, all, all this great stuff over there at underdog fantasy. So, and if you're not familiar, pick whether your favorite player has a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big, you can win up to a hundred times the amount of money you enter in a single night, pick between two and five players to build a pick em entry. Uh, and obviously the more players you pick, the higher the odds go. Sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN. You get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pick them special visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPN. You get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pick them special. All right, we are back and uh, shout out to Noah Beanick, youtube.com slash the college experience. He has loaded up uh, Nate Oates is state and damnation. I am fully committed to this team and this university. We have already accomplished some great things here, and there's nothing I want more than the University of Alabama to win its first national championship in men's basketball, despite any rumors to the contrary. Rest assured that I will continue to pursue as your head coach, or that pursuit, I'm sorry, as your head coach. Roll Tide! He's definitely taking the Kentucky job, right? That's what that means. I can't trust this is the same guy that uh, that fucking covered up a murder. Essentially, he's like, yeah. hey, he's a little little mess up. Why are we judging this guy? Oh, I, there was I, I don't think he takes Kentucky, but he'll take the next job, whatever the next one is. <laughs> <laughs> he'll take like an NBA job. Watch. Um. So wait. So I mean, now let's break down Musselman to USC because I think USC got a better basketball coach but not by much. I think every that's, that's the irony here. Rice got a better situation. SMU, I think might've got a better situation. USC got a better situation. I think Arkansas got a better situation. I think Kentucky got a better situation. The, the, it's just fucking hilarious. I mean, I don't know. We got to see what Kentucky does, but uh, Musselman's a California guy. Yep. His wife. He'll use the shit out of the portal there. They're about to get a shit ton of money joining the big 10. Not a lot of attention. Like Arkansas, you're the main attraction. At, yeah. In LA, like you're like the thirteenth fucking like. Okay, it's Lakers one, Dodgers two, UCLA basketball three, US, USC football four. Maybe you switch those. I don't know. Uh, but then after that, you still have like the Rams. Even the Kings, I think, is ahead of USC. So you, I mean. USC's ahead of the Chargers. I'll say that. They're ahead of the Chargers. But there's no microscope on you. You can shit. A year like this year can be solid at USC standards. Like what I he did at Arkansas. The Angels too. USC's ahead of the Angels, you're saying? I think so. Well, Angels are far away. It's just a stupid title to say Los Angeles. What, the, uh, yeah. Mike Trout himself is even he's he's above the angels as well. If you take Mike <laughs> Trout off the team, they're so Tony. 
<laughs> you know what it is? Is they went to those garbage ass uniforms, even though they won a World Series with that. But um, they went. Did they win two World Series? No, they won two, didn't they? No, they won one. Well, one. What what I think did it is they were the California Angels, then they were the Anaheim Angels, then they were yeah. the Los Angeles Angels. Yeah, stupid, stupid, so. stupid, stupid. That like that just California Angels. Yeah. All right, you don't say you're the one. fucking, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's just a stupid. It's a stupid thing to do. I just, do love the Rock, like in left center field. No, like, I love, an, dude. Yeah. It it's a shame they have the rock and it goes shit yeah. ricochets up. I like that. That's I've been yeah. to a shit ton of Angels games. Used to have a buddy that was actually in the front office, and I would go get hammered there all the fucking time, right? And, um, it it, I, I, but I I I've always thought they were like kind of cheesy. It, the eighties Angels, where they had the cool little you know, like to me they had a cooler symbol, cooler uniforms, Reggie Jackson and Nolan Ryan and stuff. I that image to me is what the angels should be. And they're stupid for not owning into that. Cause to me, they've been kind of Florida Marlins ish, like kind of boring, but uh, they did have a good team there in the early two thousands. Um, what are we talking about again? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Musk. Eric yeah. Musselman. I think he's going to do a good job at USC. I think it's a great hire. Yeah. And he'll be, he'll be out there in four years because <laughs> you look, you, you look at what my, Everybody that I've talked to is like, Muss had to get out of there. I'm like, why? And they go, because Muss is Muss. And he's never been, Ar honestly, Arkansas was the longest place he had been in his career. Five years. He went to what? Two Elite Eights, one Sweet 16, a nice three year span. But other than that, Nevada for four years, where he played at San Diego for four years. Every other place has won two years because he's fucking crazy. That yeah. That's the reality of it. He's hard to deal with, and he's going to be good for three years, four years. But after four I, years, I, I actually think out. though that USC might be okay to deal with him long term because they don't care. <laughs> or he'll go from like USC to UCLA. <laughs> he'll he'll do some wild shit. I could or see that. I USC could see that. to like Stanford. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Muscle yeah, it Stanford. might it might only be one year because can't I use mean, the portal Cronin's at Stanford. Cronin shopping himself in the Midwest, you know. Oh, Cronin so. wants Kentucky job so bad he couldn't even hold his enthusiasm <laughs> on Colin Coward today. <laughs> well, that's dude. That has all to do with. It's like Chip Kelly leaving UCLA. Doesn't care right now about a, they need school presidents matter. Yeah, they really fucking matter. You have to care about your athletic departments, and uh, you know. There's there's certain schools that uh, haven't of late, um, and I guess that's always been a thing. But um, yeah, I mean, I think U USC hit it out the in a way hit it out the park considering they lose Enfield. I know they were probably shocked saying he he left for SMU. Yeah, but then they, they got him, and then I, if you're an Arkansas fan, it is happy wife, happy life for uh, Eric Musselman too. His wife's from LA. I, I couldn't imagine going from LA to fucking Fayetteville, man. Yeah. I can tell you, I mean, I've been to to Arkansas. I know there's good people at Arkansas. I'm sure there's great times in Arkansas. But when you're from California, you it is culture shock, yeah. buddy. It yeah. like, yep, yep, yeah. I mean, I, I could tell stories. Save that for the for another day. Um, I rather live in Arkansas than L.A., but not her. Yeah. She, I couldn't do like, it. Get me back to LA. <laughs> I couldn't do it. And that's not saying Arkansas is yeah. not a fucking got beautiful yeah. parts of the state and stuff, but it's, it's too rural for me. It's too yep. rural. It, it's, it's, you know, I couldn't do it. And I also had a horrible experience there once, but um, I've been there a few times. So it wasn't always that bad. Like I said, I don't want to paint every Arkansas person as a piece of shit, but I, I did have a bad experience once, but that can happen anywhere. I've had a bad experience out here in California. You know, we'll yeah, it happens suey, anyway. Baby. Yeah, we'll pick suit. Yeah, suey. yeah. Um, yeah, hog hunting in Arkansas, says Jason Cox. Let's go. Um, let's go, Arkansas. Yeah, let's go. Um, Arkansas. I think you're. I mean, considering Chris Beard and Jerome Tang turned you down, which made me really question what the fuck was going on with that program. Yeah. Cause Kansas state's been ass historically. I know they had Mitch Richmond. They made the fucking elite eight one year, but I'm saying like they made the elite eight with Martin one year, but I'm saying historically K state's basketball program is not Arkansas's. 
It just isn't right. Uh, I did have a bad experience in Morgantown. I got pepper spray, but that was still a good experience. This was fucking hilarious. We were laughing ourselves at uh, you know crying slash laughing at the bar. You experience everybody's experience yeah. there, baby. <laughs> it, I, that's it was it was like Greenville, but with pepper spray. <laughs> <laughs> it was very similar to Greenville, but there was pepper spray involved, and and the taste I couldn't get the taste out of my mouth, and and the fucking my eyes were just bleeding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. Arkansas fans got to be happy because I mean I'll be honest, I love Jerome Tang, I really do. I like Chris Beard, but you can build a case that John Calipari is way better than both of them. I I wanted Beard. I I, I thought Beard was the perfect guy because he was at Little Rock, and I, I I know he had his his off off the court deal with 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 his wife and 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 all that, but I I thought he would have been the perfect guy, but from an Arkansas like ego standpoint to steal the sitting Kentu- or sitting coach at Kentucky. Oh yeah. It's, it's like, even, even if you don't win, it's like, Hey, fuck you, Kentucky. You're, you're not as good. You, your shit don't stink. Like hey, you guys, yeah. you guys think your shit don't stink. It fucking stinks. We're, we're, we're on the same level as you now, now that everybody can pay fucking blood. Well, that's why I kind of want Calipari to win a championship at Arkansas, but let's I talk about too. this. Let's I, talk I, about I this. Too. Yes. Hey, Greg Sankey. I, I'm going to put aside that. I think you're a piece of shit destroying college sports. All right. Noah hides. He hide, He hid from that. He was like, I don't want to be involved in this slander. He's in with Sankey. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have to be in with Sankey with the baseball stuff. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sh- <laughs> fucking scarecrow. Um, uh, Greg Sankey. I, I do think you've played a pivotal role in the sporting in, 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 you know, hurting college sports, but and we don't want the tournament at 96 teams, you fucking asshole. But if you want to get back on our good side, you need to put not one, <laughs> two games on that schedule between Arkansas and Kentucky. I want them in Rupp and I want them in Fayetteville. What's the name of the, the Fayetteville Stadium? I'm drawing a blank on Bud Walton. Yes, Bud Walton. Break that bracket. Uh, make, make sure they, they get in that. Sankey, <laughs> don't be a piece of shit. We yeah. want it. We demand it. We demand it. We he want it in both. Go back to Rupp. He better at least go back. We w- no. I want both. Yeah. College sports is based on rivalries, and now we got these fucking thirty team conferences where you see each other once every ten years. Yep. Sankey, do it. Do it because you're look. Your SEC shit the bed in the NCAA tournament. Right after you said those ridiculous statements, like, oh, we are, we got to eat the 96 teams. Look at UCLA in the COVID season. They went uh, the final four. Shut the fuck up. Your best schools were losing to the private school pussies of Yale and then Oakland. All right. Uh, just give us that twice. Give us that twice. Oh, yeah. There we go. I was wondering what he's doing. I thought he was doing the, the, <laughs> um, Keep in mind, no one I roomed together in Vegas, and I was yelling at him for 48 trade hours. Oakland is going to win on the money line, and he never <laughs> could pull the trigger. I said, they're going to beat Kentucky. He said, you're drunk. I said, well, that's partially true, but they're going to beat Kentucky. And, well, I said, Calipari's out of there. Well, I guess that was true, too. Yes, and Jack Golke came on the SGP show. We're gonna have him on this yes. show too, because uh, we'll have him on in the off season too to talk about uh, how it feels now to be the last person to send Calipari to Fayetteville. But I, I think everyone's happy. Like Arkansas fans, I know. Shout out to Chase Sessom. Sub- subscribe to the Notorious OTB podcast. He does, uh, you know, covers horse racing. Uh, he knows fucking horse racing really good. They call him the Wolf of Oaklawn. And that's, uh, a, that's a horse track in Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I know he's a huge Razorback fan. He He's super excited. He said, you see, he sent me a text about something like he goes, we got the biggest scumbag in college basketball. I can't wait till we start winning. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not tied in the SGPN, but Bobby bones, a country music radio host in Nashville. He flew back to Fayetteville for the uh, culmination or whatever the, the just welcoming. This is perfect. Cal this Perry. is fucking like, they perfect. They are rallying around this. 
It's perfect. I'm so happy for them. Even it's if perfect. Win, it's just it's a fuck you to Kentucky. Like it is. And then for Nate Oates to turn it down. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Well, like, what if, and, and if Donovan turns it down, well, we'll we'll oh, talk about that yeah. in a second. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, I mean, yeah. so I think Kentucky fans are happy too because there was a little bit of a rift between them wanting more tournament uh success. We'll say yeah. that. So I think they're also happy here. Um but so let's talk about Calipari at Arkansas. The the reason I think he left Kentucky was the expectations and the burden on him. Kentucky or Arkansas just ran out a guy that had two elite eights and a sweet 16 in those last four years. <laughs> what are the expectations? Oh, it's be? all hilarious <laughs> when, when he loses in the first round of fucking t- Tarleton state, but, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I still enjoy it. It's egos everywhere. It, it's yeah. perfect. But um, Ken John Calipari, I, you know, certain things to me, they can, they can be catalyst in, in change in your life and, and shots to you. Uh, you know, he failed in a way down the stretch here. They ran him out of town. It's an ego check. You know what I mean? Like I know these coaches all have insane egos, but I believe you saw him when he was walking his fucking dog, that video, he doesn't want to answer any questions. That was they earlier this year. Him. Yeah. They fired it. Like the fans fired him. Yeah. Well, that's what they I'm did. saying. So you have to deal with that in, internally. And yeah. to me, that's the, uh, those are, it sucks going through, but those are actually the best moments you can have in life because you, you, yep. you, you find out who the fuck you are, right? You, you, you search within yourself to say, and, 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 you know, it caused you to wake up earlier or to have another drink or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the college basketball experience, but no, um, I need that motivation. That's what I'm saying. It, it makes me want to have another drink. Um, but uh, that's what I'm saying. Like you get that going. And I truly believe, you know, he left $35 million on the table. That's saying something to me. That's saying he doesn't feel appreciated. And I think that is going to light a little fire under John Calipari. Now, can he rediscover that magic? Cause to me, uh, and I, I got to credit, I think Dan Wetzel that did a great article on this, that, or was it 40, one of the two that uh, college basketball was ran by the shoe companies for about 50 years, yep. 50 fucking years. Absolutely. And like, yes, Calipari still won national uh, national championship, got to another national championship. Memphis should have won that game. Uh, went to a final four at UMass with Camby and Edgar Padilla and everybody. Um, but it was a little different then. Cause to, back then I feel like you had one of the most talented rosters. You would just stack pile teams. Like you're, you're not the UMass team, but the other ones like bench guys are in the NBA. It's different today. And guess what? Your competition's different. That that 15 seed can go out and get a Jack Goldkey who's been in college for five fucking years and shoot the hell at the ball, right? It is different. I think it's harder to beat the, the like the game of basketball. And more people are playing it, like I said earlier. I also think the the fact that you can have a glaring weakness in the offseason and go address that, and I don't care who the fuck you are. You could be Chicago State. You could say, we didn't have a shooter last year, but god damn it, we could rebound, right? Well, you go out and get yourself a shooter. And all of a sudden you're a much better team. Doesn't mean you're a tournament team. You could be a much better team and coaching matters more today, in my opinion, than it did 30 years ago because teams are better because you can address that. Um, We'll see if he does it. I think he's, I I think like with the NIL and the connection to the Clintons, I I posted that photo earlier on the CJ (laughs) Sullivan one. Um, uh, Go listen to the bombs that under episode. But uh, I, I think that, that, you know, we're going to see, and I, this is why you love sports this is why we watch. It's like why I wanted Purdue to win uh, against UConn. I wanted that for the, the, the ripple effect for what, how it would treat Indiana. Right. I like watching college sports or, you know, really any sport from a glow, from a, from a, uh, you know, bird's eye view and you get the bird's eye view. You say, man, we're going to see John Calipari tested right now. He's battling adversity in his own life right now, even though he's a fucking millionaire. That's one at a bunch of places and, and a former national champ. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great to see Sankey put it on the schedule twice. Anyway, your thoughts, any, anything else you want to add to, to Calipari at, at, at Arkansas? No, I, I, I completely agree with you. And as much as I 
think Calipari's full of fucking shit. Um, he hasn't been to a Final Four in over a decade now. I think he's going to go to a Final Four in Arkansas. I, I, I'm with you. It, like, he couldn't even walk his dog today in fucking Lexington without some. No, I, th- I, I think that was a couple weeks ago, though. I, I saw that video and I think it was a couple weeks ago, but was we'll, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That well, might have been today. I'm way, not sure. I, yeah. I, I know for a fact that he could not go to a restaurant. He could, like, he didn't get fired, but he got fired indirectly by the fans. He could, like, his style, his, his peace of mind was so awful that he he couldn't go anywhere in town he couldn't go to a yeah. gas station because <laughs> kentucky is basketball yeah, man yeah, it's college crazy. basketball and yeah. i honestly i'm pulling for him i actually i hate calipari but now i'm actually gonna be in calipari's uh corner i hope he sticks <laughs> up kentucky's ass i really I'm hope sorry, J- jason's Arkansas. making me laugh yeah yeah i hope he fucking <laughs> wins there and i hope and i think he's gonna have a shot too because a fresh, a fresh scenery at Kentucky, Memphis, UMass. The guy's won wherever he's been. I know he's had the best players. You can have the best players in Arkansas too. I know it's gonna I, be so. He's got that Walmart and Tyson's fun money. to watch. I hope he and, wins. And Clinton I money. He's know where the bodies are. He knows where the bodies are. Can uh, I hope he wins this. it rough. I hope he wins it rough too. <laughs> can I? Can I pitch this? What if Calipari struggles as of recent? Is just because of the trend of the whole COVID thing. The the three first weekend exits, all the players are much, much older. Next year's the last year where kids are gonna be able to abuse the COVID year situation. I what I, if his freshman thing's able to get back and work again? I think because they're also eliminating that. the G League and whatever, or like the the yeah. what is it? What is it? The the high school. I can't believe I can't the believe they thought that that would work. Um, I, I argued with a lot of people on that. I was like, you don't understand. I, Kentucky and Louisville fans are in an old folks home fighting over who'd win. It doesn't <laughs> matter who they put on the court. It's hun- It's hun- It's like literally a hundred years of history here. Um, but that's a good point. But I think that's a little bit of it, Noah. I think I think a lot of it is the transfer portal. I think the transfer portal just makes it that that's something that ramped up after COVID. Now it was it's starting to pop through in in nineteen. Uh, but after COVID that shit went insane, that shit went in. And I think that, like I said, I just think you, you, before, if you were a shitty team or like, maybe you had some good pieces, you know, like I I'm talking out of my ass right now, but I'm saying like, uh, when I think of, of, of certain teams growing up, uh, you know, that, that had great players. Uh, and let me just say like Isaiah Ryder at UNLV, right. In the nineties, that probably that predates it. Okay. Well, whatever, whatever mid major where, you know, someone's nasty, right. It, it, in 2010 or whatever, I'm, I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head right now. So how about this? Steph Curry at Davidson, right? It, it, when, if you took that team and you knew they had no bigs, but God damn it, you had Steph Curry, you had great guards. There was another guard on that team that could shoot. Um, the white kids. He's yes. Fucking, yes. God, I forget. Uh, <laughs> They probably knew coming into the year, Bob McKillop probably knew that, man, we have great shooters. If we could just get one big, one fucking big, right? And now you can. Back then, you, you really couldn't. You, you know, the, the slim pickings. Uh, now you can. And I think that just matters so much for a good coach, you know, and that's why you see so many more 16s beat ones. Uh, you know, for a long time, we never saw that. And 15s beat twos frequently now, much more frequently. Um, I think that has something to do with it, but I can't wait to watch Calipari there. Yeah, that's true. Um, the last thing I'll say on this is Arkansas, <clears throat> both the programs over the last four seasons, Arkansas's overall record under Muss was 91 and 47. Kentucky was 80 and 46. Arkansas had eight <laughs> tournament wins. Kentucky had one. So the over grass Providence. is all- over Providence and Ed Cooley was checked Ed out. Ed Cooley was gone. <laughs> the grass isn't always greener. I'll say that. However, it's going to be fun. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm glad. I mean, one of the benefits I like of uh, Texas coming back in is they were old Southwest rivals. So you even got that element to it. Yeah. Um, but uh, look, we're going to talk about the big, big blue nation. But uh, 
Cause I wonder how Ashley Judd feels right now. Um, but uh, the Eagles uh, taking a hit here now. Yeah. I want to tell you folks that uh, the college basketball experience is brought to you by AVO. Uh, we are a proud partner of AVO, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. Uh, if you're new to, to arbitrage sports betting, it's, it's, it's actually very simple. Basically betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit. Yes. The AVO tool scans, uh, scans the sports books looking for, you know, the discrepancies in the odds and then tells you how much money you need to spend at each place. It, you know, for you to essentially make a profit, the tool is super easy and it's lightning fast as obviously, you know, a big part of arbitrage sports betting is you have to be lightning fast. Uh, the, the best part is AVO is currently, uh, free to use without restrictions. Uh, that's right. Completely free. Get started today at arbs versus odds.com. That's a R B S versus odds.com. Once again, that's arbs versus odds.com. So check them out. All right. Shout out to Jason Cox and Jason's fucking hilarious. Should, should be 54 likes. And unless you have a pussy dog, like Calipari, uh, it's, uh, yeah, get on over there. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. How's the Italian food in, in Arkansas? I think that's a big question. Olive garden. Uh, shout out to Clark. I know Clark was in the chat earlier. He's saying Calipari's going to have to open his own restaurant, his own Italian restaurant, just to uh, get some good Italian food there. Um, now we talk about, so I, one of the things I love, you know me, I, I actually don't even at times I don't look at conference. I look at regions. I, I can't help, but notice Kentucky is one of the, biggest States when it comes to college basketball, as far as fandom and everything, I know Indiana, North Carolina, but Kentucky's in there. It's up there. Um, so let me get this straight. Louisville's got a brand new coach. Kentucky's going to have a brand new coach. My tops are going to have the, a brand new coach. So, I mean, a lot of change happening. I know which team I think is going to have the best record. Go tops, baby. They promoted within. Kentucky. Let's go. My guy Let's from Indian go. Hills. Even yeah. though I wanted them to get hugs because it's not far. It's not far from Cincinnati. But yeah. Um they but did I like promote the Juco route. I like the yeah. Juco route. Promote within. Yeah. They went out and hired uh Hank Plona, right? I think yeah. I think that was his name. Yeah. Um Promote Within. He look my tops 90% were percent of his games at fucking uh, Indian Hills. So they were they were a darling of mine last year, these tops were. Watch yeah. out. Um, obviously, you know, uh, Louisville goes out and hires, uh, Charleston's head coach. I'm drawing a blank right now. Why the fuck? Yeah. Pat Kelsey. And, uh, and I saw him pluck a, an assistant away from LSU today. Interesting. So now Kentucky, who do they get? Is it Rick Pitino? Is it the ageless wonder? (laughs) The white Walker himself? You know what I mean? Uh, is it Rick Pitino? I don't think so. I'm going to put the kibosh on that. He's in year one. He wouldn't, I mean, he would be scummy enough to do that to do St. John's fans after them threw a bunch of money, but I would love um, to see him. It would be so it, great. Please season. let that happen. And that give me a package amazing. of bringing both Patinos within the contract saying, I leave it to Richard after four years. Oh, come on. Come on. That's what I think you get it. Yeah. I, I think mean, I, you I, look like, at it. Like here's your here's your rationale. Even though they didn't get into the tournament, they were the team that played UConn the best in the month of March. Yeah, they should have beat. They were right there to beat them. They yeah. got they, they got fucked. Yeah. I mean, they they if they got in the tournament, they could have been a Sweet Sixteen team because of Rick Pitino. I I think Rick Pitino, dude, that would be so hilarious for college basketball. I would I, love like it. your your That's ego. Good. Your well, because it crushes St. John's. Yeah. It's just fucking hilarious. <laughs> My thing is like Kentucky, your ego just took a big time blow. Who better to bring back than the guy that won you a national title, went to another one? Okay, he fucking left for an NBA job to Boston Celtics, and then he went to Louisville. You got tra- right, tra- to trade it away, Chauncey Billups after his first year. So that's yeah, not a very and, good. And, and, um, and Louisville fans rub it in that if he came to Louisville. Kentucky has a chance to have the last laugh. This is hilarious. Bring back old oh, God, please and fucking stick it up. Louisville. No, and I want him to bring his son. Back. I want that. I want as that. I want that as a stipend in the contract. Bring his son as the highest paid assistant. And he, he gives the keys to, to his son after year yes. four. 
and he's 75, 76 years old. His son he hates Cal. Run he with hates it. Cal. Run with it. Oh he hates God, Calabari. that would be perfect. That he would be fucking Calabari. perfect. He should fuck. They should fucking hire Rick Pitino. And then, I know everybody's gonna be like, "You're fucking drunk. You're crazy." Yes. And probably. then Jay Wright. And then Jay Wright goes to St. John's. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll say this: uh, if Nate Oates, because Nate Oates reportedly has turned down the job, if Nate Oates took over the job, he doesn't scare me. Neither, at, not even as close as Rick Pitino. Oh yeah. Man, man, you give him and that much. That money? should be, that should be the angle. Here. Like Dude, he'll win a championship. Vader, I'll say this over. No, if, if you give I'll him four Kentucky years, he'll win a fucking back. championship. <laughs> he'll win a championship at Kentucky. Yeah. I, I feel pretty 100%. decent about that. Oh boy. But I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, you know, I was doing the episode with CJ Sullivan before and, and uh, we talked, we touched on this topic, but I had multiple people in the chat saying that uh, Kentucky's athletic director is actually like, he looks for classy guys, which I find it hard to believe. Cause I'm like, what is so here? in, in the athletic article? Oh, still uh, win? This is not, athletic- you're in the fucking sec. Stop fucking lying to me. Hire Rick Pitino till <laughs> he dies. Stop fucking lying to me. I, I don't care who's writing the article. You're full of shit. You're well, full yeah. of shit. You're in the yeah, SEC. I mean, I'm yeah. just saying that's where they got it. The athletic article says that Barnhart is not interested in hiring somebody who has served the show cause penalty with the NCAA. Oh, well, guess what? Patino. You saw it. You saw it with McAfee, Rick Patino. If if they don't want him, and Big Blue Nation does, that dude's gonna get fired. Oh, they're gonna fucking they're gonna fucking yeah. ride his ass like <laughs> he'll be gone. Fucking, he'll be, be like, gone. Hey, you made a great hire with Mark with Stoops. Fuck, get this motherfucker he, out. Oh, you're on the playoff committee. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right, good Dude. fucking bye. Um, Rick Pitino would have more national championships in Kentucky than Coach K at Duke if he had stayed at Kentucky. He said I agree. It, I agree. Completely. He's the oh, best I agree. coach in college basketball in the last 30 years. Now, they were not the second best team in the Big East, which he argued, but if he goes Fair. to Kentucky, top four, Fair. they weren't even top four. Well, I, yeah. I believe they were, but I believe they got jobs. But but they didn't I, want the White Walker winning too much. Um, but, but hey, Bring him back. Kentucky Derby is in uh, what next month? He belongs in Lexington. Come on, let's go. Let's imagine, let's imagine he done. takes the job. He's like the oh. he's like the right hand <laughs> man at the Kentucky Derby. And he's he the biggest Calabari. celebrity there. Oh, him and Calabari are you me with the pinstripe better. suit. With the pinstripe suit, come on, I can see it already. Um, now let's see. Let's say Patino really does want to stay in New York City. He's born and raised in New York City, so you die in New York City, coaching your 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 local team. What's option two? I know Billy Donovan. Everyone says it's the home run. Former Rick Pitino <laughs> point guard, right? Yep. Beanick, why, why? Why not? Because he's a Florida guy. That's a rival. He's not taking that job. That's not he the reason. He, that's not he, the reason. He, he, he's, he's, turned turned he's in the play game reason. in the NBA. Right? He's a Gator at heart. He's a Gator. No, that's he can care less. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about Bruce Pearl was at Tennessee. Was he a vol at heart? Right, was I mean, the, the Pearl, Tennessee Auburn Bruce thing probably is probably gonna be the head coach of Kentucky. <laughs> yes, I, I think he's the perfect. Coach. Oh my god, imagine Bruce in Kentucky. That's what's gonna happen. I think. I think that's the one. That's that's who I would place my chips on, even even before Nate Oates too. Which which you know he's <laughs> the irony here is he's had postseason. He had the the 2019 season, but besides that. He loses like in the first or second round, like almost every year. And that 2019 yeah. season, Kramer, he real money Kramer. So too. Yeah, but hold on. Yeah, he that, did. That 2019 <laughs> season, they went to the final four. Yeah. But an 88% free throw shooter for New Mexico State missed three free throws that would have won them the fucking game. And yeah. I had New Mexico State money line. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. Oh my God. So I don't want to even hear that. that like, He's the same fucking thing. What'd you say though? The show clause? What'd you say? Yeah, he had an NCAA show clause too. So yeah, oh, Tennessee. Oh, yeah, yeah. In Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the burgers? Yeah, that's hey, right. Him and Aaron the, the barbecue. Flipper, the barbecue. Yeah. Burgers together. Well, that's the irony. That's what I hope Kentucky. If you can't get Patino, I would. My first vote would be Patino. Yeah. Second would be Pearl because the irony is you're you're rehiring John Calipari to be. <laughs> It's like he'll get your fans excited. He's a used and car Pearl salesman. Hates, Pearl yeah. hates Cal too. It's uh, great. And, but but you're still not gonna win a national championship with him, I don't think. So it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Please. Anyway, we're we're gonna have you covered, folks, for whatever they decide. 
Who do you think's three? If it's not going to be Bruce, so everyone's saying Scott Drew's one. I don't. Think, I think it's Mark Pope. I think it's Mark Pope too. Yeah, I that was going to be the name next name that I was going played bring under up. Patino at yeah. Kentucky. Done a hell and, of a good job with BYU, and he he might not want to be established under the the school of religion over there. Well, I think I think that's just normal for any athlete that says, "Hey, what." <laughs> What, what, I, what what are we doing? Um, I, I I think it's early to fucking bring in Pope though, you know. Well, I thought it was early to bring in like. Well, they mentioned Scott guy. Paget, who's a fucking assistant. I was like, what? I honestly, I I I think your original plan was the best. I think you bring in Patino and you hand it off to Richard. Yeah. I mean, what about Beard? What if Beard says no to Arkansas and yes to Kentucky? <laughs> that will spice the whole thing up again. Well, yes, yes. Do they call Will Wade? No, I, I, I don't. I mean, well, he, he had, had a show cause. <laughs> yeah, but also he had one year at McNeese, and he's gonna get the Kentucky job. Max Although, is gonna but, hate me for throwing this name out there, but Kelvin Sampson. I thought my thing is I think he's too old. He doesn't fit that though. I was thinking, you know what? You want to talk the other direction? I thought Shaka Smart might get called. But I thought about him too. But I thought that. He kind of sucked at that high profile job. Yeah, I think I he know, likes but being still, under the, under the, you know, money is it, money. Like, beer, but honestly, I if I had, if I was making the hire, I I'd hire Patino or Beard. If Beard says no and Patino says no, and Shaka says yes, do you do it? Maybe. You know, yeah. they mentioned Brad Underwood too. That would be horrible to me. No, <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to have you covered with whoever they do hire. And I'm sure it's, we're just getting started folks. You, the off season. We still talk college hoops year round here. You thought we took a night off or some shit. I mean, I guess we take nights off, but you know what I mean? We're here all off season giving you content. It's easy to see a tide turn. Uh, One hour. <laughs> <laughs> they can, hey, you know, what's crazy. If you get both patinos, they can get Jamal Mashburn Jr. too. Yeah. He's Run in the back. portal. Run He's in the back. portal. Like bring it, bring him home. Bring him <laughs> home. Uh folks, uh give Noah B a follow on Twitter at Noah B77 underscore. Speaking of Jamal Mashford, just fun funny stat that I, I found the other day. It was actually trying to look up uh trends for Dan Hurley technicals. Do you know who was third most in technicals uh drawn? Mashburn Jr. <laughs> No, it was Jalen House, but still. Oh, oh, yeah. On New Mexico. <laughs> well, NBA yeah. pedigree. He, Eddie House. He had the son. third most tech, third most techs in the country this year. Hilarious. Casey says Mick Cronin's going to be Kentucky's coach. No, he was on. He was on uh, Colin Coward today. Shout out to Casey Riley. He was. He was on. Uh, me and him were talking coaches last week on the College Experience. Hell yeah! Shout out to Casey. I, 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 I think, love Mick Cronin. I love what Mick Cronin. what what Good Cronin ball. say on Coward? Well, uh, Coward asked him point blank. He goes, "Would you go to Kentucky?" And he completely avoided it. Like, yeah, I think I think he's definitely a he's valid not, candidate. He's not going to get the Kentucky job off a of sixteen and seventeen year. I agree. I think well, big, big, big Blue Nation would be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I, I like if if it had been last year, Mick Cronin actually might have been able to pull it off. Yeah, he might. He might still do anything for that job. I don't know. Well, like, yeah, I mean, would, he would. would Mark he, Few he take it? Would Mark that. Few take it if they gave him a bunch of money? No, he likes to fish in Washington. You can fish in Kentucky. Some uh, fucking likes, ponds, some lakes. He likes to fish in Washington. I love it. Yeah, let's just get Tommy. Tommy, there. Would Tommy Lloyd take, take it? it? Who? Tommy I mean, Lloyd. Would, Tom, would you take Tommy it? Lloyd? Deserve it? No, but no. I'm saying, would he take it? <laughs> I think he would. Does uh, Nate Oates deserve it? Why was he like one? I of mean, the he top? went to the Final Four at least. I mean, he's won he, two, He's still. Uh, he's won the so SEC fresh. He's, he's still so SEC fresh. Twice. He he has, but he's still like that. Was my opinion? Like you might be able to do better than Oates. Kentucky think, is able to poach anybody. They will be. Jason Cox Nate fishes Oates. in Kentucky all the time. He says, bring on. There we go. Bring on. Mark had a few. All right. Uh, folks. I don't remember who the fuck Moneyline Max on Twitter at Moneyline Mac. 
<laughs> or I'm sorry, moneyline underscore Mac. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. We're just getting started. All off season, we're going to be talking about this stuff. We love and and subscribe to the college football experience because things are just heating up there, and the college baseball experience as the road to Omaha is next to crown a champion. Oh, actually, no. Next is the Frozen Four, which we did an episode on. Me and Beanick. Kentucky, Kentucky's solid this year in baseball. Arkansas is number one overall. So I, I know those are the two target. Arkansas audiences had a game. fan grab a fucking raccoon or like uh, a possum. I think it was a possum. Like last year, I think it was Arkansas fan just grabs a possum that's in the stadium, picks it up. He's still holding his beer, right? Gets a standing O, right? Gets a standing O there in Fayetteville, right? Definitely pissed drunk. Cause to do that, I think you have to be pissed drunk. And then uh, later in the night, he had to check himself into the ER with <laughs> with a slight case of rabies. <laughs> God damn it! I love you, Arkansas folks. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. Um, appreciate you rocking with us all year, and uh, more episodes are coming. Until next time, we are the college basketball experience. Hit that like, hit that the subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. And we out of here. I lost a bet on the Super Bowl, So I had to dive in and crawl around through the snow. Don't believe me? Believe me, there's a video. We made it to promote March 5th and then we did the show. Before March, there was a winter to be lived through. And snow fell on the D.C. metropolis. In some other cities, this wouldn't be big news. But where I live, it felt like an apocalypse. Not the kind where zombies are the wrath of God. But the kind where Mother Nature doesn't laugh at all. I didn't laugh at all. I saw the sky smoke in the front now, waiting for the ash to fall. Traffic stalled for a few weeks. Capitol Hill and snow taking up a parking space. A couple notches on the beltway ain't unique, but higher in trees is getting more than your heart to race. I mean, the rats were frostbitten. They lost it, risking their lives just to make it to the office. Exhausting, caustic, cold front rose up through the mid Atlantic and did its damage. Detective Bailey didn't expect a camera and brought a gun to a snowball fight. I know my rights in the season of mood swing. Some of us winning, some of us losing. That broken clock's been blinking since winter. I hope it's not telling me I was born to lose. I lost my temper, but I found my center. Winning winter, so I can stay warm with you. That broken clock's been blinking since winter. I hope it's not telling me I was born to lose. I lost my temper, but I found my center. Winning winter, so I can stay warm with you. So I can stay warm with you. Dad says you're beautiful little snowflakes. I say that just no more beers with no brakes. This isn't how normal feels, it's so fake. I need more to shovel while the humble hovers and rubbers, lovers, and haters ever collapsing rap stars. That's is my backyard. The chain link fence couldn't contain the frozen rain that caused the little madman to go insane. I wrote an even spray paint for Valentine's Day. She didn't feel the same, I was out of line. Hey, a cold shoulder, there's nothing new to the stone owner. Looking from a foes over Belladonna with the snow blower, bro. Temperature over kill the hot streak. They know I'm a broken clock and talks cheap. The homie came to the bird, caught it after the misery crew saw the storm growing faster. As the but the man got a lump of cold, rambling for babies, and there's nothing on the stove. There'll be a rush on the road, so put your luck on hold. Real bread and toilet paper. So, but I, I gotta go. This is not for show. I really ought to get my clock fixed before the snow falls. And all this is washed away. I see my breath in the air as I cry out, not today, today, today. today. That broken clock's been blinking since winter. I hope it's not telling me I was born to.